Yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Yui from the Strictly Broken channel and today I'm bringing you guys another Phantasmal Steed deck profile. Today I'm doing Shadows and yes, it is the Mordred Phantom variants. Uh, the, the Shadows decks, the Shadow decks as of late, there's like a lot of debate and a lot of like different builds that you can do with it. Uh, it's very up in the air what you actually want to be doing as the main build. Some people play Makup Karen, some people play Dorant. Some people don't play either, some people play both, some people play old PBD. So this build is, I'll tell you this right now, it's just in the main, uh, no Makakara, no Dorant, but it is uh, Mordred Phantom. Uh, it's very just, you know, get that really strong first grade three turn with the Mordred, get a lot of forces, do three damage on that turn, and then do a kill turn with the Mordred when they're on grade three. Uh, so yeah, let's do the profile. Uh, uh, and yeah, let's just get straight to it. Uh, starter, obviously. I don't run the new starter because, you know, dogs are way cuter than, you know, people. So yeah, I gotta run this one. That's bad. Because you're gonna look at this every game, right? You're gonna start with this. So you want something that's adorable and cute. Um, and then for grade threes, three Mordreds, obviously. This card is how uh, the new builds want to be playing the game. Uh, Restanding two rear guards makes you kind of feel like Excel, but you're not really Excel. I will say this this card is surprisingly weak. Uh, power is not that insane unless you trigger critical triggers and like the attack patterns on this card make it so that because you're going rear blaster dark rear blaster dark and then Mordred and then restanding both gain 10k it's kind of weird in that sense because if your opponent takes one of the first two even though they're smaller and they do hit that defensive the restamp power is like completely nullified it feels kind of awkward if the powers are just like passive it would be really really good so I can understand why they only do it off the restat. Uh, it, it's nice to know that at least people tend to guard the first two Blaster Darks because they're really small numbers anyways. But, you know, if, if you stack a lot of Force Markers, they're like 20, 30. Uh, they're still pretty big boosted. They're like 20. Uh, they're like, they demand quite a bit of guard. So if they take the first two, hit the defensive, the restat power is completely nullified. Uh, regardless, this card, even though the restat effect only works on the uh, on when the, your opponent's also grade 3, you still actually want to ride it first even if you're going first because once you like if you ride it first going first and you set up two blaster darks you you have such powerful like pressure on your opponent because they're usually not a 10 or a 9 that uh, they're probably taking three damage that turn and when they once they take three damage and they're at like four or five multi attacking is actually really powerful danger lunge becomes an actual finisher to close off that two damage gap so this card is just all around the only card you want to ride uh, the other grade three, I do play four of it because there's space because we're not playing Maka Karen, is four Danger Lunge. Now, sometimes, very fringe, you want to ride this. It usually involves when you ride Blaster Dark and you have no other Blaster Darks in hand and ways to get them. If you go first, you can run, you can ride a Danger Lunge. It's okay, but never, you should never ride Danger Lunge going second. Uh, this card is just a finisher card. And to be honest, four, I'm only running four copies because you just want to see one of them for the kill turn. Uh, but you'll probably never use more than one because the format's pretty fast right now If you get to a turn where you can do a second danger lunge or do a turn of double danger lunge column, you're probably dead before that but uh, Yeah, the card is just really solid soul blossom grade 3 against 10k crit and your opponent cannot call sentinels for the battle when it's written as Vanguard you can soul blast one grab the grade 2 uh, Grade 2 from any grade 2 from drop zone to hand. Yeah, but you usually use it to grab a blaster dark obviously uh, overall very solid finisher but, and when, when you stack a lot of, a lot of Blaster Darks, uh, the Force Columns with this, like if you went stack on one side because you have a really good Danger Lunge hand, and you go like four Force on one side, that's like 63 attacking, 63 double crit. If your Vanguard triggers a crit, it's 73 triple crit. If your opponent's at three, you can just auto kill them. A lot of decks just can't handle that kind of pressure. They don't draw that many cards. Uh, so yeah, this card is a really solid finisher for the deck. So you just really want to see like one or two copies in your hand every game. Grade twos, obligatory, you gotta run the Blaster Dark. I will say this, uh, the popping effect is kinda bad. You don't really wanna use it that often because it costs Counter Blast, and you, you need to use Counter Blast for your Masquerades. You need to use Counter Blast for your Mordreds. Uh, you need to use Counter Blast for what else? You need, for draw power with Sword Breaker. So, yeah, like, you just don't really wanna pop that often, but you know, sometimes you really catch people off guard. Uh, one scenario is if they go like, uh, let me think. Of, I'm trying to think of a really good scenario where popping's really good. Hmm. I don't know. Like, if you're on like a vanguard turn, and your opponent has like two rear guards, but you don't want to commit more, 
because you might not have a hand to commit more, and they have like they want they rush you with double rear guard, and you just go blast your dark as the vanguard, pop one of them, attack into rear for the other. That's like a one card, clear two cards, so that that might be a good play with the pop, but I can't really think of many situations where you want to pop anymore. Four masquerades. This card is so in this pure build you for sure run four. Um, but other builds, you can, they start cutting this down because it's not really a true plus unless you ride it. So when you ride it, you look at top seven, you add one, great, you don't have to pop if you have nothing on the field. If you open the main, you still have to pop it, that's like the one thing. And if you open the main, you will play down the main. So this card rarely truly pluses, but it's really good at finding the Masquerade, really good at finding the Blaster Dark, making sure your game plan is consistent because your, your game plan is very piece dependent. So this card is just four more copies of all those pieces, most likely. Top seven is a lot of cards to look at. Uh, other thing to notice, so it gains passive 3k when it attacks the Vanguard. That's insane with the, the main engine because 13, if it's on rear, 13 plus 5 is 18. If you went first, they're on that 8k at grade 1, you're attacking for 18, so you're demanding like, even if they hit defensive, you still have to demand, like, they still have to give like a 5k. So this card's really solid. Um, yeah, it just, and even like on grade 3 turn, if they're grade 3, this card's attacking 13 already. So it's like, it's just really relevant. 23, you know, they have to hit more than one defensive for this card not to hit. Very solid card. Absolutely important to keep the combos consistent. Uh, and then one copy of Curse Lancer. I really don't like this card. <laughs> There's some really, like, this card is not very good, but you have to play it. Like, sometimes you just don't have the counter blast and they counter blast now you or they're just not really doing that much damage and they pass like if they ha they're attacking with a crit column and then you're at four all counter blast flipped uh you have to guard you have to guard again and then they just pass turn off their one damage column and you just don't have any counter blast so this card like can really catch people off guard you just put one of it um the main is a really it populates your board really heavily so sometimes the minus doesn't feel like a real minus but yeah just the one copy it's also a big beater 20k you know when it uses the effect the last grade two, and I'm actually not going to count it, I'm just going to show the entire the main engine at the same time, is this, uh, I don't even know what's called, the Fallen Dive Eagle. Um, I'm just going to show the whole in the main engine, got these pieces, and the four in the main. So I'm going to start with this card. This card is just a PG for a rear guard attack. Uh, pretty solid. It's just, it's just another flex card. Uh, right, right now there are some pretty good rear guards, like a lot of the Excel decks, their rear guards are hitting really high numbers now, they're like two card guard numbers. And so this card is like a one card intercept for a PG on one of their swings. So this card's really relevant in those matchups. Uh, one copy of this, it makes Blaster Darks hit 13. So if you have a double Blaster Dark board, you in the main call this and then you sack it, give both Blaster Darks 3K, now they're hitting 13. So now it's great numbers, demands more guard off opponents because they're usually not a 12 or a 13. Very good card. Uh, three sword breakers, so People often play four sword breakers. It's actually useless right now. Like you would never go through four sword breakers and there's just like, like this build shows, there's like way better cards to call out. This card can honestly even go to two. I'm considering it, taking a one copy of the card that demands your opponent to card, guard with two cards. Th this card is not very good. Uh, the plus is nice early game. And you know, obviously in the main engine goes without saying it creates really good early game rush. But this card is just not really that great. So three copies, maybe even you, you can go down to two and add in like a third eagle or a second copy uh, or a first copy of that card that guards for two. And then four in the mains. In the main engine, the main, you open this card, you're probably winning the game. If you don't open this card, the problem with this build, I'll tell you this right now, if you don't open the main, you're probably losing the game. Now, if you don't open the main, this card can at least plus you. So it's, you have a game, you have a game plan in that sense. But honestly, the main is so important in this specific variant of the deck that if you don't open it, you're probably dying that game. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of glass candy in that sense. But you know, you have four copies. You can mulligan aggressively for it. If you see it, you're good to go. And it's not auto lose, but it's it's just like your your, your game plan just feels a lot worse. Uh, and then finally, the last grade one, four copies of the grade one masquerade. Uh, so. This card is just four more copies of Blaster Darks. It makes your engine even more consistent. Uh, I think that's about it. Like this card honestly doesn't feel very good because once again, big problem with the new shadow support. Not a lot of things truly pluses. This card doesn't plus at all. It goes to soul, I have to use the effect. And it's just, it feels really awkward. It costs counter blast and everything, but you know, four more copies of Blaster Dark is really relevant. If you commit Blaster Dark on the first Mordred turn and they go rear, rear, 
then you don't have your blaster darts anymore, so you need to always see constant blaster darts so you can pressure them. Uh, oh, sorry, that isn't the last grade one. I also tech two of this. It totally slipped my mind. This card's pretty cool. You soul blast one when you guard with it. You move something up. It's kind of like the G guards and the premium decks. You move uh, one of your grade ones to guardian circle, so it's 20k. 20k is pretty good. Uh, it, may, it just gives you more guard value in your deck overall. You know, this deck, as I said, once again, doesn't draw that many cards. So drawing a card that's 20k shield is really valuable. Uh, and yeah, that's it for the units. Uh, onto, onto triggers, you got the eight crit. Here, I'm gonna do this first. Eight crit. Uh, I don't play the owl crit because you know, you just want to have men crit or like, I don't even know if this is a man. Uh, I don't know if this is a man to be honest, but you know, the more men you see, uh, the more likely you hit the crits, you know. If you play it like an owl, you know, you're just gonna see it less to be honest, but uh, Crits are really good. Crits create early game pressure. It closes the gap because you really want to get them to like four or five as fast as possible. So by running crits, you know, you're getting them closer to that four or five damage and then you can actually kill them. If they're at three, you're probably not killing them, to be honest, unless you once again sack a crit off the danger lunge turn. So crits, you know, super valuable for the game plan. Uh, four draw PG. Deck doesn't draw a lot. I want to stick to draw PGs. Uh, it's just obvious. You hit a defensive draw, and I think and once you hit a defensive draw, you're like good to go in the early game. If you draw a PG, you know you're pretty safe against like a lot of different decks right now that are popular. And then you uh, you can't play a Vanguard deck in standard without four heals, to be honest. So four heals. Uh, for the markers, now <laughs> if you go to a tournament, I'll tell you this: you should put three Force Two markers in your deck. Uh, but you know, just to make a bold statement, I just only have. Force 1 markers, you actually never make Force 2. Making Force 2 is actually just like, you're actually just trolling your opponent. Like, you're so confident you're gonna win that game that you're just BMing them, like, to be honest. So, I, only Force 1s. If I, like, yeah, if you make Force 2, your opponent should just call you out in the tournament for, like, BMing them, and then you'll get a game loss. So, just stick with that Force 1. Make sure you don't BM your opponent. And yeah, like, the deck just does not benefit off Force 2 at all. You can't stack more than three of them. Well, you can, but then you won't get any benefits off the effects. Your blaster darts are swinging for, like, kill yourself, like, kill yourself numbers. Like, it's just so freaking feels bad. Like, one trigger denies all the blaster darts. Um, and then makes the next round of blaster darts off the restand five to guard. It's just, you want to go Force 1. You want to make things big. You want to make danger, danger launch big. That's all I got to say. And yeah, that's the deck profile. Uh, I'm going to... Pull out these Mordrids. This card, you know, feels a bit underwhelming. I gotta be honest with you, but if if you get that early game pressure going, uh, the deck's still really solid. Now, let me know in the comment section if you want to see the other Shadow Shadow Paladin variants that uh, Phantasmal Steed has created. There's like a couple more Mordred variants. There's a PBD variant. So yeah, just leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Strictly Broken YouTube channel and check us out on social media. Cool stuff, the team, super exciting stuff. And yeah, six tops already this season. That's really, really cool. And yeah, I'm just gonna sign off. I'm rambling now, so peace.